The proposal is one of the greatest anticipations of a woman. The day he goes down on one knee should be a fairy tale worth a storybook. But for most men, this could be one of the most terrifying moments. What if she says no? What if he doesn't live up to her expectations? I fear. Rejection. So, are there any proven standards? Hints and clues? Today in our show, we rummage through the archives in search of men who have gone out of the norm just to give the women in their lives an honorable and memorable proposal, as in the case of a decent proposal. Liz could not wait to marry George within a year of his proposal. George, I, I am very glad that uh, I am now becoming your wife officially and I'm looking forward to a happy marriage. Um, getting married to you of course is a joy because we've come a long way. So I'm looking forward to the best. After all, he was the man who seemed to fulfill every fantasy and dream she ever had. Wow! Oh my god! Oh, so thank you, George. Thank you, George, for pulling that on me. This is quite a surprise. I was actually expecting a Mercedes convertible, and here we are in a limo. It's so exciting. It was such a surprise. Exactly two and a half years ago, George and Liz had met while on business. Immediately after, they struck a friendship, reminiscing of their campus days. I looked at her and I was like, wow, okay. It does happen this way, you know, that's the first thing that came to my mind. And I thought, hey, you know what, now that it's back and uh, there's no way I'm going to let it go. So I started calling, um, ensuring that we take coffee weekly. Okay, it was either, either morning coffee or evening coffee. If you don't do it in the morning, we'll definitely do it in the evening. Yeah, and after that it was lunch, and then dinner after which, then one thing led to another. As they say, the rest was history. He proposed towards the end of their second year in their relationship. He had whisked her away almost to the end of the world. I took her and asked her to pack up for a weekend because we were going on a drive. I did not want to disclose when and how long it would take. His destination was a weekend getaway hundreds of kilometers beyond Isiolo. When we got to Isiolo and went past uh, Archer's Gate, we actually got lost for 70 kilometers. Yes, and we had driven the whole day, so I was feeling a bit tired. So when we drove up for 70 kilometers, it was getting dark, and she started now getting scared, and the shifter issue came about, insecurity around the northeastern. Imagine being lost in the wilderness for hours. Well, that's exactly what happened to the couple on the night of the proposal. We had to drive through the game park to our lodge, which was about, um, how many hours? About an hour and a half, driving into the game park. At night, it was not interesting. Just from the blues, from nowhere, we see this big elephant now, somewhere, by the roadside. Almost next to the road. Actually, it was on the road. Because there's no way you could push, you could move. Just, you know, it had to move so that you could move. And so, it's, it's just comfortably lying down there, like it's commanding, hey, it's in the dark. I own this region. Yeah. All right? <laughs> <laughs> it was particularly scary. I remember at that particular point, you know. Getting questions like, you brought me all the way from Nairobi to come and die <laughs> Honestly, here? I asked. Was not the kind of question <laughs> I was expecting. I was like, whichever load we find first is where we're going to spend the night. The rest, we can search tomorrow, in broad daylight. Unknown to her, George had already planned and organized everything via the internet. It had to be that particular lodge. So we get there and there are people expecting us. I was like... Yeah, they knew me by name, just by walking Have you been here before? Or... How do they know you in this wilderness? Come first night, the food was great, the music and the ambience was right. Still, nothing to let loose George's little secret. We had gone for this game drive during the day and I was looking forward to dinner. So the list I was expecting is a band and issues and I was hoping you take list time and then go back to, to the room and rest. Before she knew what was happening, there was a band playing all around her. I'm excited, the mood is set, the pace is set. And then come the dessert, yeah, in the ice cream. I'm like, am I seeing my own things? Or is there a ring? <laughs> yes, 
George had whisked her away to the wilderness and with the stars shining high and the night coming to life, there was no chance of getting a no. He rose up and took, grabbed my ice cream and pulled up the ring. Then went down on one knee. My God, this is interesting. You, know, you, could, you could actually see the big surprise on her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> By the time he was getting to ask the question, I think I had said yes. <laughs> Immediately after, they embarked on their wedding plans and treated their hundreds of guests to food and dance. Halima walked down the aisle with a big smile on her face as both her parents led her towards her waiting groom. The day had finally been sealed after one long wait for Halima. I thought it would be nice for me to have a ring before the year ends. And I'm thinking, oh, December 29, December 30th, okay, the year is gone. And when she least expected it, he literally swiped her off to the moon. Proposal, oh my god, that was like the happiest, happiest, happiest day of my life. Uh, he had called me and told me uh, today is baby's day out. Little known to Halima, this baby day out was what she had been waiting for for so long. The idea was I wanted to propose to her and when she says yes, I tell her this is our wedding date. But I need to tell her this is our wedding date in style. We drove down to Shalom, the picnic site. And when we were there, he's like, oh, I have a surprise for you. And he's like, I'm like, what's this? He's like, open this. And I was like, oh my God, it was this craft book. And when I turned the pages, the first page, I'm seeing my baby pictures, like when I'm four months and I'm thinking, oh my God, how did you do this? How did you get my pictures? I could see he had taken time you know, to put the scrapbook together. He had taken time to recreate the pictures into miniature pictures and put them in the scrapbook. He had gotten different kinds of papers and put them, and I was really, really touched. He then held her in his arms and led her down a nature walk. As we are overlooking the river. He tells me, you know, today will have been the perfect day to give you the ring. But I'm so disappointed because I had ordered for it. Uh, from the States and someone was supposed to come and they postponed their coming But I still feel I need to let them know that they really disappointed And he's like, oh no, I don't have credit on my phone. Can I use yours? I'm like, sure. So I sit down With my bag. I give him my phone. Then he leaves his phone Me, I know he's calling America and he's telling his friend one or two things Then the, the phone rings and I hear the ringtone. It's one of like our favorite head I'm so happy and before the moment sank in he led her to an especially reserved table I keep thinking my heart is about to burst this is just too much you know I kept holding my heart and thinking God can I take one more surprise today back in her house there were petals strewn all over and scented candles to perfectly end her day I knew one day I'll be proposed to but never nothing like this you know my day had started with a single red rose on the car seat and it was ending with a single red rose on my bed. Pius's next gift to Halima was the wedding. It was a perfect day. I'm so excited. I'm so happy. I'm Mrs. Moshiri. <laughs> yeah, we loved it. It was perfect. Josephine and Samuel celebrated their nuptials in a beautiful purple and gold colored wedding. This gracefully marked the end of one long wait. There's a time that will come. Even bending will be a problem. And you really need somebody to be on your side. To be sincere, I thought uh, maybe if I, when I was outside here, maybe if I drive, because I would feel some emptiness. If I drive a good car, it would answer and feel good and feel young and all that. I thought, oh, okay, it's not the car, maybe the house. I shifted to a good house, I thought, oh, it will answer everything. But then I realized it, there is more life to that. Samuel proposed to Josephine in a sweet romantic restaurant setup after a year of their courtship. 
Unknown to her, Samuel had it all laid using her closest friend. I'll talk to her, tell her what I'm planning. When I bought the ring, I told her I have the ring with me here. Luckily for him, Josephine's friend wears the same ring size as hers. She went and tried her ring without her knowing. Said, oh, it fits very well. She organized the hotel where the engagement will be. She organized uh, uh, some of the friends that they are going to play game with. Uh, the whole game with. To block away Josephine's instincts, the two coded her, James, all throughout the plan. So she would get lost in the conversation. We didn't want her to get, we didn't want to use that lady's name, she should, uh, should, because she would wonder who, is, who that is. So I would say, is James around? She would say, she, James, is just, and we would avoid she and he. Uh, we would say, James is at home. He, in fact, he is just doing nothing and he has no plans. Come the D-Day, Samuel walked in ahead of Josephine and hid away from the specially set and reserved table. When she sat down, obviously, I came and joined them, thinking that I'm coming from the car park. The tradition was in one of the rooms in the restaurant and I was seeing her coming in. And then, like a real romantic, he went down on one knee. For a moment, Time seemed to freeze. Everybody in the hotel now was a lot of what is happening. There were some uh, Wazulus who were there, Indians, and they were like, Say yes, you are punishing him. Then me, I was like, What? Still in a shock. What Sam had planned to be an intimate occasion with the closest of friends turned into one big bash. They asked for a mark pen, they started writing at my back and gauged and gauged and gauged. She had a funny t-shirt. She only had to put up the, um, like a sweater on top. I was in shock. Looking back, I wish I had dressed better than <laughs> Nadie walked down the aisle to meet Jeff with the musical sounds of the trumpet accompanying her graceful walk. The groom had something special up his sleeve for Nedi. Jeff had proposed a few months earlier while on vacation in Thailand. We were on a cruise ship at night. We had gone for dinner. Um, so we sat on the ship and we sang. There was music, there was moonlight, and magic in the air. Then shortly, um, I see a guy, he says to stand up. I was so nervous, I stood for a very long time, I didn't know what to do, how to start and... My fears were, what about if she tells me, no. I have to say yes, what if he changes his mind, so I quickly say yes, yes. <laughs> then after that is when I, 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 I clear a bit. No, that's when it sank actually. To celebrate their vows, the couple treated their 500 guests in a burgundy and gold marquee setup at the Windsor Golf and Country Club. Milka, a human rights activist, and Golbert, an advocate, said their vows, sealing a relationship that had stood the tests of campus life. Two met back in Nairobi University. 
she was in her first year, he was in his fourth. After the first interaction, a friendship bloomed and Milka, in her innocence, trusted Golbert enough with both her heart and her money. So she told me I have this cash. I don't want to disclose <laughs> them. I think she was to pay something, school fees or uh, accommodation. She said, can you keep it for me until I come to get it back? And I was felt, look, this young lady, we, we hardly know each other. I mean, this is almost the second week after meeting. And here she's giving me this money to keep it for her. She, like, she really trusts me to that level that she can give me her money to keep it for her. And she's, she's confident that she'll get it back when she comes for it. And, uh, and here, I'm a fourth year almost leaving campus and I'll not disappear with her money. So I thought that was uh, something I, I found a bit uh, humbling. He knew immediately this was a woman for keeps. And years later, he did the honorable. She closed to go for holiday. That short period she was away from me, I felt that something was missing for me. We had connected emotionally to that level. So when she came back, I didn't waste time. I proposed to her the same day she came back. But Golbert was a fresh graduate and his bank accounts were still in the negatives. I wanted to buy an expensive ring for her, which I could not afford. So I, I, did, I went to the shop, identified the ring. Then they told me the amount and I didn't have that cash. So they gave me the receipt. I, I proposed to her with the receipt. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did. He went down on one knee with a sales receipt of the cash deposit in place of a ring. Quite an honorable thing to do. And she knew this was a real and sincere man, one she could trust her life with. a strapless glass beaded gown with grace as she walked down the aisle to meet Jimmy. Finally, a second ring on her fingers. The first one still holds fresh memories. We went out of town as usual, as in that was our favorite. Whenever we had time, we used to go out of town. Then we went out of town, uh, we booked a hotel and we just went, had fun that night and the following day he decided uh, maybe we'll just go to the national park. It had taken Jimmy months of planning. These two do not keep secrets. Getting into the car had to even hide the, the rings <laughs> in the boot where the tie is because she, she loves, always check on what is everywhere. So <laughs> I'm happy I was able to surprise her. He went down on his knees and he was like, uh, baby, there's something I really want to uh, do today, and that is uh, I want an answer from you whether you're going to marry me. <laughs> yeah. Never had that scream that way. And this could make the only surprise ever in their marriage. No, it's not a secret. It's not a secret. <laughs> we don't do surprises. <laughs> but their refined taste for this day is no secret. It's to the happy voyage awaiting. Diana fell in love with her fiancé's guitar skills before she fell for him. After a few years of training and playing together, they walked down the aisle by the poolside. As you're walking down the aisle, I see the smile on your face and the beauty in your eyes and I realize that we are meant to be forever is the long enough to share my love with you forever is the long enough to love you to love you forever is the long enough 
She now has the real ring on her finger. Her engagement ring had slipped over a surprise dinner at the Hilton. This day he just shows up at my workplace with a box of chocolates. He then followed it up with a dinner at the Hilton. Waiter brought some chocolate, some ice cream, and he said, "This is a gift to you for being our guest today, and we have it's a good luck charm. You'll have good luck." So I told him, "I'm a Christian. I told him, I don't believe in good luck things. May I believe God will sort me out." The first scoop, I'm thinking, "I what's this?" I was shaking. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know should I cry, should I laugh. <laughs> I didn't expect it. Said yes. Guys, uh, those guys came around, clapped. That's when I realized, oh, it was a planned thing. There was no chance of getting a no here. It was just the two of us, cause uh, past experiences. I have a friend who actually did that, and yeah, the lady accepted the ring. Then later, the lady says, uh, "I mean, how did you expect me to say no in front of your friends? I mean, one on one." She tells me no, it's a no. It's a yes, it's a yes. Well, in private or in public, she has said I do to him. It's now a certified status. Lillian walked down the aisle to wed Harold, a man she termed as honourable in their third year of courtship. This man Harold had sat through the bride's father's test and came out triumphant. But I had to verify the kind of man who took my daughter. Then I told this young man, I want to know your pastor to know the side of the story. No the pastor came and I learned, Harry, this is a nice young man who loved the Lord. And so I, I knew my daughter is in the right hands. which had seen Harold sacrifice even the most cherished of belongings just to say, will you marry me? As I was hustling here and there, difficulties rather than making ends meet, I had to try as much as I can to get her a ring. Yes, he was jobless by the time of the proposal, but was determined to make it decent. Contracts here and there. So like here you paid... Uh, you you paid partly for the work you've done. Another part you paid partly for the work you've done. So putting all together, I went. Uh, I paid for a deposit for the ring, and then after later on, I paid the entire amount of money. Actually, I had to give up my laptop as collateral. The reason why I had to give up my laptop was because I had to propose to her on her birthday, and the time was up. So I was more, more or less compelled to give up my laptop as collateral. I knew I would get there. I had confidence in myself that I would get there. But I wanted to know, ideally, is she able to accept me as I am? Later on, Harold was hired as an accountant with a construction company. And to prove his dedication... The first money he got like this, mm. he comes home for the introduction part of the day. I wouldn't want anyone to be with her. I mean, right now, I have her. Let me just seal this relationship. Now, not many a young man will sacrifice their first payslip to pay dowry. Harold was an exception. He even honored her with a second and decent proposal. He took me to the tribe. So I thought it was just a normal dinner and yeah, that's it. We just go. It's my birthday. So yeah. When I got there, surprises upon others, even from the managers. <laughs> yeah, it was really nice. Perfect. He had made every plan, every plan, plus the cake and everything, how it's gonna go, how they're gonna bring it. 
bit by bit. I couldn't believe the last shop was the big cake. Because I just thought, okay, the dinner is over. Can we go now? So I see a guy just come with a very big cake and I think, okay, so what's next? And again, he kneels again and will you be my wife? <laughs> and I say yes. I had to make it a more, a more beautiful and more sweet and uh, romantic. Mary and Lawrence accept their vows in a mirthful ceremony full of friends and family. Exchanging the bands of eternal devotion. Finally here, it's finally now and we are so happy. Mm -hmm. uh, that we just got and married at All Saints. Loved the worship. It was really good and straight from the heart. I loved seeing all my pastors and men of God praying over us. She flew all the way from Bermuda to say I do to him. This question he had popped when she least expected it. When your hopes are just dumped, like uh, so I was just feeling okay, if we don't get engaged, we'll get engaged later. But I would have really love to have a ring. It's not really all about the bling, but also for my comfort. They had been courting albeit over distance for close to two years. He being in Kenya and her in Bermuda. Very far, 21 hours if you have British Airways. It's yeah. about two hours from New York City. Yeah, mm. so it's quite far. Then came that one afternoon in a secluded beach in Bermuda. Then, in the confusion of the moment... Oh my God, I thought he was mad. And you know why? He's not a good swimmer. And then the tide was really high. And the waves were, you know, were just coming and going. And I thought, he is going to just be taken away by this ocean. And, you know... So I thought he was being cheeky. He was being playful. It was finally happening. Lucky for them, another couple celebrating their anniversary at the beach agreed to share their moment. He removes the ring and I don't know what happened to me, but just emotion. I'm sure I said many other things, but I was so emotional. I was like crying and screaming. This precious jewel had brought a whole new meaning to her life. And now she was ready to say I do to him. And he was more than willing to do the unusual and plan every bit of their wedding. His efforts paid off. This was one of the most fulfilling days in their lives. Azita walked down to Beethoven's Symphony No. 5 with her dad by her side.
Theirs was one romantic golf affair full of happy endings and sweet memories. Boniface's proposal was the last thing Azita expected that night he took her out for dinner. He had it all meticulously laid out with the waiters. I signal to them for them to bring the, um, the wine was this one. <laughs> I was just scratching myself like this. <laughs> When she did finally finish, or got to the bottom and saw the, the wine, uh, the, the, the ring, you know, she just uh, turned teary faced. Uh, and I just went on one knee, down on one knee, uh, and I asked her, as it does stand, my love, will you marry me? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Cool and yeah, it was nice and candling. It was nice. If you plan the proposal well, your future wife will likely spend the next 50 years bragging about your proposal to her. Personalize the proposal by incorporating her tastes. For instance, a hiking trip may be fantastic for the sporty type, but will certainly spell disaster for the metro loving introvert. And while the high seas proposal will sweep one girl off the ground, it may not be the best idea for a prone to seasickness girlfriend. So, when it's time to pop the question, every woman expects class and decorum. When you do have the right ring, the ideal place and the memorable idea, be prepared. Saying, will you marry me, is a huge deal. Put some time into it. It's worth the investment. So what is your ideal proposal? And what is your take on these men's proposals? Share your sentiments on our social pages, Facebook fan page, Samantha's Bridal. Follow us on Twitter at sbridal underscore Kenya or simply log on to www.samanthasbridal.co.ke. Discussions are going on now.